Hello and welcome to Dining with Death. This episode is on my playlist, Dining with the Disappeared, where we talk about people who have vanished. We talk about the circumstances surrounding their disappearance, and we talk a little bit about the place they vanished from. And because this is Dining with Death, a lot of times that place is a bar or a restaurant. I'm Stacy Lee, let's begin. This is a strange and frustrating case. I try and make it a point to cover as many men who disappear as I do women because missing men don't get the coverage or the attention that missing women do. And you know, I believe every case matters. Of course it does. John Spira was, at the time of his disappearance, a 45-year-old man living in Chicago. He was a blues musician and he was known by the name Chicago Johnny. He played guitar with a band called the Rabble Rousers, and they did a lot of local shows in bars and clubs. John was part owner in a business called Universal Cable Construction. He also had a pilot's license and regularly flew out of the DuPage Airport, where he owned another business called Flight Matrix. On the morning of the day he disappeared, February 27, 2007, John met with his soon-to-be ex-wife, his estranged wife, to discuss their divorce. They met as planned, and then John went to his office for his workplace's weekly barbecue. That's a fun workplace. They have a barbecue every week. I love that. <laughs> At 7.09 p.m., John made the last call from his cell phone to a friend of his to set up dinner plans with that friend. He told his friend he would meet him at 8.30 that evening in Oak Brook. John finished up with the barbecue, and no one is really sure where he went after that, but 8.30 in Oak Brook came and went, and John never showed up. This was very unusual for John. This friend had just spoken to him. He knew John was coming to meet him, and John wasn't someone who missed his plans. His buddy made a few calls, and soon people realized they hadn't really seen John leave the barbecue, but even stranger, his truck was still in the parking lot at his office. John's girlfriend, Renata, was made aware that John had missed his dinner plans. She started calling his phone over and over, but he never picked up. She said she called the police, but they told her, one, it hasn't been long enough to file a missing persons report, and that even if it had been, she couldn't file that report because she wasn't a family member. I find that kind of a disturbing policy. You shouldn't have to be someone's family member to report them missing. I mean, what harm is there in reporting someone missing, having them look into it, finding out they're with somebody else, their family member? Okay, great. I understand that takes a little bit of police time, but I mean, isn't that what they're there for? So I certainly hope that that policy has changed. I do. Two days later, after John still hadn't turned up anywhere, his estranged wife, Suzanne, went to the police department and filed a missing persons report on February 25th. People involved say they felt they kind of had to pressure Suzanne to do that. She seemed a bit reluctant to do it. One of the first things the police did was send dogs out, cadaver dogs, to John's business because it's the place he was last seen. So the dogs begin sniffing around and there are a couple of employees with the police and the dogs and one of them notices something. There is a large roll of commercial grade plastic that's missing from the company property. The employees say that it had been sitting there, ready to use for a job, and now it was gone. The dogs didn't find anything that would cause them to alert to the smell of a dead body. That, of course, is good news, but it also just continues the mystery. Apparently, after the barbecue, only John and a couple of other people stayed at the building. It was kind of an afternoon barbecue, not an evening barbecue, so everyone took off by about 5.30 or 6 o'clock, leaving only John and a couple of other people at the office. Investigators pulled John's cell phone records and saw that his phone was active until 11 p.m. on the evening that he disappeared, and it used the same towers that it normally uses, all of those surrounding John's workplace. John's business partner is a man named David Steuben, and he was the last person seen with John. David told the police that he saw John talking with a vendor of theirs who worked with their company when he was leaving the building at 7 o'clock, but then someone else told the police that there was no vendor, only David and John were left in the building. I found a third account that said there were two vendors in the building and that those vendors both agreed that John and David were talking with each other, and those vendors don't know each other and don't have any reason to make up that story. So this is a little bit of a murky point. 
Something very important. David and John were having very serious financial issues at the time. There were problems inside the business and things were not going well between David and John. Now, there are people in John's family who dispute this, but I found a lot of information that says this is the case. Police investigated John's disappearance for weeks and then months, but they never found a single clue as to what happened to John. In September of 2007, months after John vanished, his business, Universal Cable Construction, was destroyed by a fire. John's family firmly believes this fire was set intentionally, and they also believe the fire is related to John's disappearance. It was then uncovered that John had not only a wife at the time of his disappearance, but several girlfriends. So that made things much more complicated. Perhaps a jealous husband has now entered the mix of suspects. John's family paid to put up a large billboard right across the street from John's business. The billboard went up on a Friday and by Monday morning, someone had torn it down. It was gone. This is starting to feel a lot less like a disappearance and a lot more like a homicide, right? John's family, his sister in particular, a woman named Stephanie McNeil, has always insisted that Suzanne, John's wife, knew more about his disappearance than she let on. But in 2010, John's estranged wife suddenly died in her home in New York, and that death was attributed to natural causes. John's sister was very frustrated when no one from the police department working on John's disappearance notified her that Suzanne was dead. She didn't find out for six months. John's sister says that she doesn't even think the police knew, that they aren't working on the case closely enough to keep tabs on that kind of thing. And frankly, it appears she might be right. Stephanie claims that she is angry with the DuPage County Sheriff's Department because it refuses to classify her brother's disappearance as a homicide and that they aren't taking the case seriously enough. Stephanie has even appealed to the Illinois Attorney General's office to try and get files to force the police to show her records, but she has had little success. Stephanie said her Freedom of Information Act requests have been denied or only partially filled. John's brother, Tom, is convinced that David Steuben, John's partner, and Suzanne, his ex-wife, conspired to do away with John. Tom said that Suzanne didn't want a divorce, that she had a very comfortable life because John paid for everything and provided her with everything she needed and wanted. Suzanne refused to take a polygraph and was always very nervous about speaking with the police. It looks like the family once maintained a website, johnspira.com, but every time I tried to access that website, I got either an error or I was redirected to an advertisement, so I don't think they're maintaining that anymore. I'm sure when you're the family member involved in a situation like this, there comes a point where you're just like, you know, what more can we do? Do we maintain the website forever? Do we keep this up forever? Do we accept it and move on with our lives. I just, it's a tough place to be in. I found it very interesting that a detective working on the case said that John Spears' business partner is not cooperating with the police. That to me is very telling. In this footage here, you can see a reporter from Crime Watch Daily trying to speak with David Steuben, who is covering his face, avoiding the cameras, and very obviously does not want to speak with this reporter. In some police reports obtained by a media outlet called Patch.com, the police write in their reports that John Spira had racked up massive debt and owed in excess of $1 million. They then speculate that John Spira actually faked his disappearances and skipped town. John's sister vehemently denies these theories. The reports further document that John's business partner, David Steuben, alleges that John was taking money out of the business, kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul type situation. David said that John lived a mysterious life and even alleges that he had disappeared before earlier on in his life when things weren't going so well for him. Whether or not that's true, I can't tell you. David is quoted in the reports as saying, John might have been taking money from the business and I wouldn't rule it out that he might have faked his disappearance and then burned the building down a few months later. Are these the statements of someone speculating as to what may have happened 
Or are these the statements of a man who had something to do with the disappearance, trying to steer investigators in a different direction? I find this allegation a pretty big reach. John chooses to disappear and then he burns down his own business. But if he's disappeared and can't get to any of his bank accounts because he's in hiding, how does that help him? I mean, I guess if it was purely for revenge, but it certainly wouldn't help him financially unless he had an executor that was somehow funneling him proceeds from the insurance payout for the loss of the building. That seems pretty far-fetched, but hey, we've seen stranger things happen here in the true crime world. Apparently, David Steuben took the money from the insurance payout from the fire and rebuilt the building in the same location, but he's never used it. It just sits empty. I couldn't find any word on whether or not Suzanne received any money from the insurance settlement before she died. If she did, that money would have passed to her heirs. This same news outlet that got the police reports, Patch.com, called David Steuben and asked him for a comment, but he refused to discuss John Spira in any way, his disappearance, or any of the statements attributed to him in the police reports that they obtained. The most interesting thing in the police reports is what is written about Suzanne Spira. One report reads, Suzanne appeared nervous and upset, and within a couple of minutes into our conversation, Suzanne stated, without prompt or being asked, that she was being honest with me about not knowing where John was. She stated that some people lie and can't keep their story straight, and she will tell me the same story 20 times and it will never change. Due to the infancy of the investigation, I did not pursue the obviously strange out-of-place statement. So in other words, very early on in the investigation, Suzanne was already making claims that she didn't know anything and no matter how many times they asked her, her story wouldn't change. We all love a good barbecue and I think it's a really nice thing that John and his company did for their employees every week having a little barbecue. Nothing better than, you know, a little grilling after a long week of work. And that's the last place John was seen. As of right now, John's spirit is still missing. There are virtually no clues as to what happened to him. He was 45 when he vanished in 2007, so he would be 60 years old today. He has dark hair and eyes with a receding hairline, and at the time he wore a mustache and sometimes a goatee. He weighed around 175 pounds. Like I said, the website is not working, not for me anyway. The phone number on the missing billboards and signs is 630-407-2326, and if you have any information at all, you can call that number or you can call the DuPage County Sheriff's Office at 630 630- 407-2400. If you know anything about this case, please reach out. John's family deserves some closure on this, and on the off chance that the theories about John choosing to disappear are true, John, if you're out there, call your sister. If you're not, I certainly hope you're not suffering. This is a sad case and one that's caused a lot of heartache, and I want to send my love to the people John left behind. Thank you for joining me today on Dining with Death, Dining with the Disappeared. Hit the like button if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to support me. It helps a lot. Another way to support me is by joining my Patreon. That is a fantastic option. Stay safe and be kind to each other. And I'll see you next time on Dining with Death. Bye.